lever works the same way that a seesaw does, with a board resting on top of a piece called the fulcrum. But with a lever, one side is longer than the other. And that's the secret to its power. With a lever's help, it's possible to lift any weight. All you need to do is get the short arm of the lever under the load and push down on the long arm. And the longer the arm, the more weight you can lift. And that's how a lever makes people stronger. If you want to see infrared rays, all you have to do is look through a digital camera. Try it for yourself. Turn on the camera on a mobile telephone. Now go ahead and press any button on the remote control and point the camera toward the front of it. You'll see a bright dot on the screen of the camera. That's the light emitting diode working. It's letting off a special light that can't be seen by the naked eye. It's also possible to point the remote control at a mirror. And then through the camera, you can see how the light emitting diode turns itself on. So what that means is that invisible rays bounce off of a mirror in the same way that regular light does. So you can control the TV by bouncing the light from a remote control off of a mirror. You don't believe me? Then go ahead and try it yourself. An SMS is no different from a letter. It's only shorter. People send SMSs through their mobile phones. And that's why looking inside someone else's phone and reading their SMSs is just as rude as reading someone else's mail. And that's why when we fixies work inside of a phone, we always put our headphones on when a call comes in. So we won't overhear people's private conversations by accident. It's just the polite thing to do. A simple code lock is built with a few disks that have numbers on them. In the center of each disk is a hole with a notch. When all of the disks are turned so their notches line up in a straight row, the lock's pin can slide out freely. And to get the notches to line up, just turn the disks to the lock's code and the lock will open. It's that simple. If an object is lighter than water, it floats up to the surface. And in the same way, if something is lighter than air, it floats upward. Did you know that hot air is lighter than cold air? Well, it is. And that means if you warm up the air in a balloon, it will float up. Hot air balloons use special gas burners to heat up the air inside of them so they will get lighter. And the bigger the balloon, the more people it can take up into the air. A Fixie is constantly surrounded by all sorts of danger. Inside a dark freezer, a Fixie can lose his way and freeze to death. If he's not paying attention, he can drown inside of a washing machine or inside of a dishwasher. And a careless Fixie is always at risk of getting an electric shock. Or suppose there's a short circuit inside of an appliance that starts a fire. If this happens, you need to run away if you want to survive. And what about humans? Well, they don't even believe that we Fixies exist at all. So they can accidentally drop something on top of a Fixie or step on one or kick us across the room. So if we don't get out of the way in time, ah! Oh! So what I'm saying, Fixies, you need to be careful out there and pay attention. So be smart and stay safe, fellow Fixies. If we take a look at a digital disc through a powerful microscope, we can see rows of tiny valleys of different lengths. These valleys are actually a code for the cartoons, games, or music recorded onto the disc. Inside a disc player, a laser beam reads the code and helps turn it back into pictures and sounds. But if you scratch the disc or smudge the disc with dirty fingers, the laser can't read it and the disc won't play. That's why you need to keep discs clean and stored in cases. Remember, never put any metal objects into a microwave. If you put forks or spoons in a microwave, you can burn it out. And then not even a fixie will be able to fix it. Even a thin metal border on a plate can cause serious problems. Also, never warm up food in sealed packages or bottles inside a microwave. And one last thing, don't even think of cooking eggs in their shells in there. They'll just explode. flows out of the faucet and flows down into the drain trap and after that it goes down to the sewer. 
But when you turn off the water, not all of it washes away. Some of it stays down in the drain trap. It's made that way so the smell from the sewer won't get back into the house. A ring is much heavier than water, so if you happen to drop it down the drain, it won't wash away. It will stay at the bottom of the drain trap. Of course, young Fixies go to school just like human kids. But their parents teach them a lot of important lessons, too. Fixie parents take their kids on tours of all sorts of different devices and teach them what Fixies can do to keep them working properly. They like to show them how the computers or televisions or gaming systems work, or any one of the many appliances they take care of inside of the kitchen, like the stove. Every once in a while, a new device appears in the house, something that the Fixies have never dealt with before. To learn how this new thing works, the Fixies gather together and read the instructions that the humans keep printing up, but almost never seem to take the time to read for themselves. The hot air balloon was invented in the 18th century by the Montgolfier brothers from France. In those days, there were no gas burners, so they heated the air inside the balloon by burning straw. At first, there were no passengers on their balloon. Not counting the Fixies, of course. I mean, how else could a balloon get up in the air without them? Unfortunately, the names of the first Fixies who took that flight were not recorded in the annals of history. Following the Fixies' flight, the next passengers were animals. A ram, a rooster, and a duck. And it was not until those three safely landed after flying a full four kilometers that humans dared to fly in hot air balloons themselves. Ever since their invention, hot air balloons have also gone by another name, Montgolfiers. When something is very well made, then the saying goes that it was made with just a little bit of soul. In old times, craftsmen made things to last and in each appliance, they would leave just a little piece of their soul. Those little pieces of their soul would turn into tiny craftsmen called Fixies, who would then make the appliance their home and take care of it every day. And that's how the very first Fixies came about. But as the years have passed, fewer things are being made by hand, and more and more things are getting made by machines in factories. That means there are less and less new Fixies coming from human souls. Luckily, Fixies can fall in love with each other and have their own family, raising their children and teaching them well, so they'll grow up to become skillful and honest Master Fixie repairmen. The secret numbers and letters that you use to lock something up are called the code or the password. And to make sure your password's a really good one, here are some things you should know. Never choose a password that's really simple for someone else to guess. Like one with numbers or letters that are all the same or are all in order. It's also a bad idea to make a password out of your birth date or name. It's better to think of a password that's a bit more complicated. And don't forget your password once you come up with it. Write down your password on a piece of paper and keep it in a safe place, but don't show it to anybody else. And then, if you happen to forget your code or password, you'll be able to remember it with the help of that piece of paper. There are Fixies living in every home, and the work they have to do can seem endless. The TV starts acting up, then the doorbell breaks, the washing machine stops running, and then the phone won't ring. And besides all of that, there is cleaning and there's oiling. Like the appliances in the kitchen or kids' toys and all those other things, modern houses are literally stuffed with all sorts of devices. And that is why the Fixies keep working day in and day out. Unfortunately, this can make Fixies get carried away by their jobs. And they can forget about their Fixie relatives and close friends that live in the neighboring houses and apartments. And that's not right. Just like humans, Fixies have to remember to go and visit each other more often and write each other letters, or at least send their regards. Just like the name says, Fixies live to help machines and appliances. But machines are very big and Fixies are very small, so they can't get by without tools. 
Long ago, fixies worked with just about anything they could find. Little feathers, threads, pins, but now they have backpacks called pack -a mats Inside a pack -a mat are all sorts of tools. Just push the button and the pack -a mat spins around quickly shooting out a hook or a magnet or even a parachute. Every adult fixie has their own pack -a mat but before children can get them, they have to go to school and study hard and then pass an exam before they have the rights of a full-fledged fixie. And it's only after all of that that young fixies get their own pack of mats Inside of most remote controls, there's a special type of light bulb called a light-emitting diode, or LED for short. When we press a button, the LED sends an invisible infrared ray. And in the TV, there is a receiver for these invisible rays. The TV understands the command that comes from the remote control and carries it out, like changing the channel or the volume. Many people wrongly assume that the only way fixies could live is by stealing food off of humans' tables. Or worse yet, by stealing it from their refrigerators. That's just a lie. It's not true at all. Fixies don't eat any kind of human food. So then where in the world do the fixies get their energy, you're wondering? It's very simple. A fixie's entire life is connected with devices. Fixies not only live inside of devices, but they take care of them and help them live longer. And in return for their help, these devices share part of their energy with the fixies. So there you go. The fixies help devices, and devices help the fixies. Yes, we fixies and machines have a symbiotic relationship. So we don't eat leftovers like cockroaches, because we're fixies. A refrigerator has a pump that pushes a special liquid through a long tube. Inside the refrigerator, the liquid in the tube wants to turn into a gas. To do that, it takes the heat from everything inside, and that makes the refrigerator cool. Then the pump sucks in the gas and pushes it out as a hot liquid into the tubes on the back of the refrigerator. That lets all of the heat collected from the inside escape into the air outside. Inside of an electric kettle, there's a heater hidden underneath its bottom. When you turn on the kettle, the heater warms up the water until it boils. And the boiling water gives off steam that heats up a special metal plate at the top of the kettle. The heat causes the metal plate to bend and that turns off the switch. So you could say that an electric kettle feels when the water's boiling. toothbrush is really simple as long as you know these three parts the battery the motor and a very clever mechanism that connects the motor with the bristles the whole secret to the toothbrush is right in there that mechanism uses the spinning of the motor to make the bristles move very fast back and forth from left to right from right to left and that's how it brushes your teeth these are your teeth. Well, I mean, they're not your teeth, but you get what I'm saying. Nowadays, we use a toothbrush to clean our teeth, but it wasn't always that way. The ancient Egyptians used a chewed stick to scrape their teeth, while the ancient Greeks rubbed their teeth with a rag. And the Vikings, well, who knows what they used? And then, only 200 years ago, an Englishman named William Addis came up with something better. He drilled holes into a meat bone, inserted bunches of bristles into them, and there you go, the toothbrush. And here's what I need to tell you all as a fixie, that is, as a master repairman. You need to make sure to brush your teeth often, especially after eating, or you'll be getting them repaired often at the dentist. 